Welcome to lecture 24 of ECE 4305 Software Defined Radio Systems and Analysis. In this lecture, we'll build upon our past experiences of the past lectures in terms of designing communication systems, especially with Software Defined Radio, and apply it to a radio with an onboard intelligence for making um, decisions on, uh, on everything from the choice of operational parameters to ways of accessing the wireless spectrum um, in real time. And we refer to this technology as cognitive radio. So what is cognitive radio? Well, um, there are a variety of different definitions which we'll look at in a few minutes. Um, but in a nutshell, a cognitive radio is an intelligent wireless communication system. But there's more than just intelligence behind this type of wireless uh, device. Um, it's often based on uh, things such as uh, software-defined radio technology, but it's not exclusively um, a software-defined radio. You could have cognitive radios based on more conventional um, uh, radio hardware, but software-defined radio lends itself nicely to uh, cognitive radio because of its reconfigurability and agile functionality attributes. Uh, furthermore, um, cognitive radio is often very much aware of its operating environment in terms of uh, spectrum availability, network traffic, transmission quality. But this is not also um, uh, sort of a unique definition uh, for cognitive radio. There are a number of wireless standards that uh, do this exact same thing um, in an automated fashion for accessing wireless spectrum and transmitting. This last bullet um, really sets cognitive radio apart from all other types of wireless type of devices, and that is the ability to learn from its environment and adapt to new scenarios based on previous experiences. Something that's not usually associated with your everyday run-of-the-mill uh, wireless uh, communication system. So I mentioned def definitions, and there are a variety of uh, cognitive radio definitions. Uh, one by Joseph Mitola. Um, is a wireless personal digital assistance and the related uh, networks were sufficiently computationally intelligent about radio resources to detect user needs as a function of use context and to provide radio resources and wireless services most appropriate to those needs. Ah, beautiful. How about another definition? This one by Simon Haken from McMaster University. An inclus inclusive SDR the idea to promote efficient use of spectrum by exploiting the ex existence of spectrum holes, an intelligent wireless communication system that adapts to statistical variations in the input stimuli, which are highly reliable communications, efficient utilization of radio spectrum. So this is great because now what we have are two of some of the many definitions that exist out there in terms of what of, of what a cognitive radio should be. But there are some basic building blocks behind a cognitive radio, which I'm going to uh, sort of articulate right now. So a cognitive radio possesses some of the following attributes. So the first thing is you have the radio platform itself. Okay. And so what the radio is going to have is it's going to have a transmit and a receive structure where transmit sends out information and receiver picks up information. Now, what happens is you might have some sort of decision-making process, okay? Or decision database. Database. That tells you or tells the radio how to be implemented. Now, what happens is this radio also will provide with us, especially from the receiver, some sensing information, okay? And this sensing information goes into our learning process, okay? And, and reasoning. And then the learning, what happens is it has some sort of interchange with the decision database. It keeps it up to date and provides new decisions and new sort of approaches for specific scenarios. And likewise, when learning, you might also want to refer to what past decisions are. And then on top of that, there's an overarching policy engine. 
And what that policy engine is doing, and, and rules and other, is that it dictates what we can and cannot do in the spectrum. It tells the decision database what's uh, eligible and what's not. Because imagine you take your uh, radio and then cross the border into another country, different set of um, uh, different set of uh, operating conditions exist. Um, maybe some are not uh, considered legal in that particular country as opposed to before, and you're going to have to readapt to your new environment. So the policy will tell you that, and then it will also tell the radio what it can and cannot do. So, and then the sensing information also goes into the decision database in case you, based on what it does detect of the environment. Um, the, the, the appropriate uh, decisions can actually be uh, set up, ready to be communicated and applied to your radio, which I'm going to write here is reconfigurable. All right. So that, in a nutshell, is how a cognitive radio appears, where you have a programmable platform, you have a decision database, which might have a current set of decisions as well as those that need to be made, which are applied, uh, which are created by a learning process. You have sensing that detects what's your environmental parameters and informs the decision database and the learning of the situation. So, if it's an, a pre-existing situation that the decision database has knowledge of, it will just apply that decision to the reconfigurable radio. Otherwise, learning occurs. In, in, uh, uh, where the learning process uh, works with the decision database to come up with the best possible configuration and applies it to the learning database, which applies it to radio, and the policy engine that sort of dictates allowable states, uh, given the geography and laws and regulations uh, across that uh, location, that spectrum, and that time of day. So given the building blocks and, and our understanding of what cognitive radio technology is, we can now look at some of sort of the key attributes that we associate with this technology and see which definitions from which communities um, sort of say approximately like, you know, what, 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 what do they think when they, when you, they hear the word cognitive radio? So, so we, the, the different attributes that we are going to look at that define what a cognitive radio could be are things like user needs and how the radio addresses them, uh, assessing the context in which it's operating in, the idea of intelligent control and um, efficient access of radio spectrum and spectrum efficiency, um, the acknowledgement of the presence of a primary user, a licensed user that has priority over that spectrum over us, uh, using software-defined radio technology or SDR, uh, cooperation between different users and reliability. And what we see is that we have sort of this scattershot right across um, uh, uh, all these definitions from Mitola and Haken and the software-defined radio forum that recently um, uh, changed their name to a Wireless Innovation Forum. Uh, the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission in the United States, as well as the information theory crowd. Uh, all of these guys have definitions, and you can see some attributes are common, like the idea of the efficient uh, access of radio spectrum and primary existing primary users, while others are more very much specific to that definition. Okay. So um, now that we uh, are talking about cognitive radio and this idea about making decisions and learning and making and, and, and some sort of onboard intelligence, the question now comes, how do we build this intelligence, right? Um, and the idea is you use something called a cognitive engine. So the engine is what really drives the decision-making process and intelligence of the cognitive radio. And it could, and you could very, you could at a high level say that this engine takes radio transmission parameters and environmental measurements combined with a set of performance objectives that are associated with a particular type of service it's trying to render. And it tries to make decisions that are most suitable for those performance objectives and environmental measurements and parameters, right? And so in order to do this, we need to relate everything in, in, in a language that uh, the intelligence will understand. And being engineers, that means writing mathematical equations. Because what will this, this will all evolve into essentially something called multi, uh, a, a, a multiple objective uh, uh, fitness function. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to create these equations that tell us like by a numeric score how well or how poorly we're doing in terms of meeting the needs of the 
um, human operator that's using our device, uh, given all these sort of parameters and, and, and environmental characteristics that surround us, plus the performance metrics. And then given these equations, we can use um, techniques from artificial intelligence, such as genetic algorithms and rule-based systems and case-based reasoning to help us with the decision-making process. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can use techniques that are already out there. So we can look at a cognitive radio system as a black box that takes in inputs and provides outputs and inside the intelligence is making a decision based on the relationship between those inputs and what those outputs should be. So we can almost look at this black box as a collection of knobs and dials, just like what you would have on your radio. And the transmission parameters would be the knobs. Those are things that you're fine tuning. And the environmental parameters can be viewed as dials, like what, what, what you're detecting about the environment around you. And there's a numerical quantity associated with it. And so from these parameters, uh, we can make relationships using these mathematical models and our decision-making process attempts to make the best association between the knobs and the dials. So again, how would this black box with these knobs and dials look like? Well, let's take a look, okay? So let's look at the cognitive radio again. So the cognitive radio consists of a collection of dials, just like you would have in a radio, and you would have, you know, values indicated things like um, things like power level, channel quality, um, network load, and others. You would have a bunch of dials. Sorry, not dials, knobs. Things like transmit power modulation, bandwidth, maybe others as well. And what ends up happening is all of these guys are connected by an intelligence that tells the radio what it should be. So based on the observation of the dials, which are here, that's our dials, they feed that information into the intelligence. And then the intelligence, in addition with let's say the target performance. So let's say there's a target user, sorry, experience. So that's your performance metric. That gets fed into your intelligence as well as allowable radio configurations like what modulation schemes and such are allowed. So that also gets in there. That, in turn, our intelligence says, hmm, okay, based on these conditions, based on what the user needs to have, and based on what I can perform, program my radios to be equal to, I am going to choose the following dial, uh, 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 knob values, which are down below. These are knobs. And that's how we tailor our radio automatically using a cognitive radio approach. So... What happens is now let's we have a choice on what sort of dials and knobs and performance metrics and all this we can select. We can be very we can keep it to a very small subset, we can be very exhaustive. And all of which have mathematical representations as we will see. Okay? So what we have here, the first is the radio transmission parameters. Okay? Things like the transmit power, modulation type, modulation index, bandwidth, coding, uh, coding rate, um, the, uh, the frame size, the time division duplexing, uh, the symbol rate. All of these are tunable parameters that we can use uh, knobs in order to adjust on our radio platform. Likewise, um, what we see out there in the environment, like the path loss, the noise power, the battery life, the power consumption, the spectrum, availability, all of these can be represented as numerical quantities that are essentially dials on what we see out there during our transmission. 
And then the objectives, the goals of our cognitive radio, what it's trying to do. Things like we're trying to minimize the bit error rate, maximize the throughput, minimize the power consumption, because if we have a finite battery power supply, uh, that could be trouble if we are using a lot of battery. Uh, minimize interference and maximize spectral, spectral efficiency. All of these are some of the objectives that your radio, one or more of which can be uh, uh, used all at the same time. And so what we want to do is from these environmental parameters, radio parameters, and performance metrics, create the multi-objective fitness functions. And one way is to use something called a weighted sum approach, where if we have multiple objectives in which, in which each objective has a bunch of environmental parameters and radio parameters fed into them in certain ratios, in certain equations, we can combine them and weigh them based on how important it is for that human end user that's using that radio, which we see in this equation here. This is very specific for a multi-carrier transceiver. So we can even break this down by the subcarrier, how much power modulation and interference and all these other individual um, parameters tune and adjust and tailor each subcarrier uh, such that the aggregate performance meets the needs of the human user. So we can try, like for instance, in this example here, if we want to operate in low power mo mode, we might want to weigh, uh, minimize power consumption as 45% uh, and everything else is not as high. Or emergency mode where reliability and bit error rate is important to keep low and everything else is not that important. And then a variety of other modes. So the question is, and this makes for an excellent uh, PhD dissertation or master's thesis, what are the appropriate weights? How do you optimize those weights for a specific scenario? Like no one really knows. And it would be a great research problem for someone to find out what exactly to do. So I did promise you some equations. So we'll go through them quickly. You can devise these fitness functions for each of the individual performance objectives based on uh, the variety of um, different environmental and radio parameters that are available for a platform, such as minimize the bit error rate is essentially if you want to have a score between zero and one, you would use this equation here where um, PBE is uh, bar is the average probability bit error and that in turn has um, inputs from the signal to noise ratio and interference and the choice of modulation scheme and the pulse shaping filters and all those other parameters. So we almost have like sort of a nesting of equations in, in, in this expression here. The same can be said about maximizing the, uh, maximizing the data rate and a variety of different parameters that in turn depend indirectly on a variety of other parameters, environmental and um, uh, 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 radio parameters uh, equivalently. Same thing for minimizing the transmission power uh, and as well as the interference and the uh, spectral efficiency. So from all these expressions, uh, we can see that there's an extensive amount of dependency on what your radio parameters and your environmental conditions are. And sometimes there's an interdependency and sometimes they conflict with each other. So you need to really come up with a way of balancing out uh, what you're looking for in, in terms of importance. In terms of the actual engine itself and how you construct it, once you have these expressions, um, there's a variety of different uh, approaches that computer scientists have been exploring for decades in the artificial intelligence community, such as expert systems, which is a non-algorithmic approach that just consists as a collection of rules devised by an expert. Um, genetic algorithms, which use evolutionary techniques um, th th that, that uh, tailor the transmission parameters as chromosomes and then uh, use sort of the process of natural selection in order to choose um, strong chromosomes for, choose, uh, for, for de desi designing the radio itself. And then case-based reasoning, which uses history in order to determine the best possible solution. 